Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Rasim and you're watching my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about developing a research proposal, especially for a literature thesis. Writing a research proposal serves valuable purposes. To begin with, it make it easier for you to present your research idea in a well-organized manner. The second advantage is that it can serve as a guide or roadmap for you to follow while conducting research. It keeps you focused and ensures that you are consistently working toward your goals and objectives. My lecture covers the fundamental parts of research proposal. Let's proceed to the discussion. What is a research proposal? Please check out this definition of the proposal. On the basis of this definition, we can simply say that research proposal is an outline of your research project. And a clear and well thought out proposal is the foundation for a study. And as such is the most crucial part in conducting research. Once the proposal is finished, the research project must begin with the hitch. And once completed, research proposal is the product of a sustained process of planning and designing the research. And later on you will find that both planning and designing are as important as working on research or, or completing or writing of the thesis itself. Fundamentally, uh, a research proposal has three functions to perform. First, communication. The proposal communicates the researcher's intention and research plan to the committee for approval. Second, Research proposal is a kind of contract between you, between the researcher and the university. The approved proposal describes a study, a plan of action, that if conducted competently and completely, should provide the basis for a dissertation that would meet all the standard for acceptability. Third, a research proposal is a plan of action for carrying out the research. A reader's expectations. It is important that your, thesis, uh, your research proposal should meet the expectation of your readers. The reader's expectation center on such questions as, is the proposed research feasible and doable? Is the research worth doing? Can the candidate do it? If done, will it produce a successful dissertation? In other words, review committee, I mean your readers, use the proposal to judge both the viability of the proposed research and the ability of the candidate to carry it out. Hence, research proposal is such a vital document. And remember, the supervisor or the research committee or the departmental advisory committee. Briefly, a research proposal is an outline of the entire research process. It is a summary of the entire work that you are going to develop in the form of a thesis. It is also an intellectual contract between a student and the university for the completion of a project along acceptable lines. It specifies the what, how, and why of your research. It is an opportunity to convince others 
that you have something important to explore and argue. Hence, it is a fundamental part of research study, giving a telescopic view of the actual study. Research proposal, fundamentally speaking, answers three questions. And these three questions are the heart of the proposal. The questions are, what will you do? Means, what are your research questions? How will you go about the whole process of evaluation and analysis? Means, what will be your method and theoretical framework? Three, why do you think it is important to do this project? I mean, you have to give proper justification for writing a thesis on a specific, on a particular project or topic. Besides, it demonstrates that a student has done a sufficient amount of preliminary reading, textual reading, reading of theory, reading of available literature, understands the method of conducting research. The student is aware of the skills required to finish it. Skills, especially the analytical skill and the writing skills are the most important skills. And the students have to develop these skills to finish the project well. The student understands the amount of hard work involved in it. It's time, energy, planning, everything. You have to put a lot of work to finish your project in a stipulated time frame. Finally, research proposal demonstrates that a student is able to plan a long document. So thesis is a long document comprising chapters in a proper sequence and without uh, ability to write a long document thesis cannot be finished in a proper frame just to re-emphasize i would say questions a method and a strong justification a few words about the hierarchy of concepts a research proposal has a hierarchy of concepts, and they are research area, research topic, general research question, specific research question, and data collection questions. It's a top-down approach. On the top, we have research area, a broad, a general one. And then from this broad and general area, we have research topic. Then each research topic give rise to, gives rise to a number of questions. The questions are general, broad one, and then we have specific questions or sub-questions springing from the general question. And finally, we have data collection questions. Data collection questions help you in the research process by uh, collecting or uh, for collecting data from different sources. Review concepts and questions. These are self-exploratory questions. And you will find every scholar asking these questions during the process, at the start of the process, and at the completion of the process. The questions are, what is my research about? Think about it. What is its purpose? What is it trying to find out or achieve? Especially, what questions is it trying to answer? How will my research answer its questions? Why is this research worth doing? Why are you doing this? What is my research area? Have I clearly mentioned it or identified it? What is my topic? Have I clearly identified it and shown how it fits within the research area? What are my general research questions? What are my specific research questions? Does each particular research question meet the empirical criterion? Is it clear what data are required to answer each question? 
choosing a topic. While choosing a topic of your thesis, you need to focus on originality and uniqueness. Remember, your topic is key to the comprehension of main focus of research. Hence, it requires a lot of thinking and creativity. A few more words about the, about the nature of the research topic. A research topic shows the specific area which you want to work on. It is a clear indication of the problem to be investigated. It is never exhaustible, can be refined during the process of research. It need not be wordy, avoid lengthy lines. It is drawn from a general area, but narrowed down to a specific idea. It should be more intellectual than emotional. It should be researchable and it should be stated in a statement, not in question form. Introduction of your research proposal. The introductory section of your research proposal introduces your topic to the readers. It explains why it is essential to research the topic of your interest. What inspired you to choose this area? It also explains where the idea came from. It may also be an explanation of some key terms which your topic contains. Next section of your proposal is background, background of the study. It contains a lot of information. Typically, it provides a concise summary of the literary events or context that led to the current research topic. So it's a kind of bridge between your topic and the previous studies. It discusses the main and relevant aspects of your study. It is written in a chronological style, highlighting progress and missing points or gaps in the research concerning your area and topic. Statement of the problem or statement of purpose is the most important section of your research proposal. It is a concise but comprehensive statement of the context and the gap your study aims to fill. It refers to the objective of the study your principal research question, the theoretic framework, and the topic's significance. While writing a statement of the problem, make sure that you state your problem as concisely as possible. Avoid using unnecessary jargons and technical language. Create a logical argument that will persuade your reader. And finally, highlight the why of the problem. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel for more videos and lecture. In my upcoming lecture, I will be talking specifically about developing research questions. Thanks again.